Well, we are excited that you're at Cairo Church of God today. We just welcome you today. It's so awesome to come into his presence and into his house as one and worship and praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We do that during the week, but there's something about when we come together corporately to worship. And today, Leslie's going to come and sing a song in a moment. Um, and, and it's about um, worshiping. In, in Revelation chapter 4, there's some verses there in 6 through 11. And verse 6 says, in front of the throne, there's something like a sea of glass, like crystal. To picture, our minds try to picture, but really it's impossible. But he's, he's given us a description here. It says, around the throne and each side of the throne are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with a face like a human face, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. And the four creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Hard to picture. Day and night, this is not hard to picture. Without ceasing, they sing, Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Remember in the Old Testament, God was called I Am. But here we see that He just transcends all time. He was, He is, and He is to come. And so if you go on down to verse 9, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, what do the 24 elders do? They fall before the one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they, were, they existed and were created. What better way? They just wanted, that's what they're doing. They're praising Him for creating all living things. And today, we can do the same. When we start thinking about the Lord God, our Creator, and when we start thinking about who was, who is, and is to come, and we start thinking about Him coming, and we start thinking about Him being right here in our present circumstances, it is easy to say, Holy, 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 Lord. we're here to do today. We're going to pray. We're going to have Leslie come. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today. 
They were married 64 years before Brother Frank passed away this earlier, the, the, earlier this year. And her funeral was yesterday, and I was privileged to officiate at that. And also, uh, next Sunday, a very special guest speaker will be with us, and that is evangelist uh, Aaron Fuller and his wife Kaylee and their son, Canaan Blake Fuller, some of those brand new babies people. And uh, Brother Aaron, I have been following his ministry ever since he was Aaron, and, uh, and, and he is uh, Tim and Crystal's nephew, and I raised first cousin, one of them. And, uh, and so the, these people live in church. Uh, Tim's mom, I mean, like she is like church, church, church. Uh, like we are, kind of our family. But uh, the Lord really blessed Aaron. He's got a dynamite ministry, uh, greatly in demand, and we're privileged that he will be able to be with us. Preachers with a great anointing, and he's excited about being with us, and they will be with us next Sunday morning. So we're looking forward to that. He had to kind of adjust his schedule, I think, son. But we appreciate him doing that, and we're, we're just excited about him being with us. And so may the Lord uh, bless us. And also, uh, from Cairo Church of God, congratulations to President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harrison. And just as we pray for Brother Pastor, excuse me, Pastor, President, how about that, Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence, we will pray just exactly like that for the new president and vice president. Yes. And and God is still God no matter what. That, that presidents come and go, but the Lord still remains. Yes. Our faith and our hope is in the Lord, but we need to pray for these people. It doesn't matter who's elected. Don't worry. They're going to be taking heat before they get into office. It's not easy no matter which side you're on, and it's tougher than it looks. And these people do need our prayers, and I, I hope you will just pray for them. I pray, been praying for presidents ever since I got saved, and I think maybe the first one I prayed for might have been Jimmy Carter. Uh, the Lord would bless him and lead and guide him and keep him safe and, and help him to make wise and godly decisions for our nation. So that's going to be the continuous prayer. We pray it always, and we'll continue to pray. Anyway, and uh, we're just glad you're here, and uh, and uh, there was a phrase that Jamie shared a little earlier, and, and she mentioned the phrase, in times like these. Actually, that is, even though you cannot see it, the title of the message. So we're looking forward to sharing that. I had two messages, and I'd like to preach them both. The other one's called God Can. Can't wait to preach that one. But in times like these, and this is written not in mind with anything like a presidential change or anything like that, or it continues presidency, but this is written to people who were having to live out their lives every single day, and it wasn't easy back then, and it's not any easier now. So if you're going to live for the Lord, you better have a made-up mind to live for the Lord. If you don't, you get sidetracked. But God has a word for us. We'll be sharing this uh, from uh, a translation Crystal really likes, and I like I, 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 I sometimes words things in a way that we can understand it in a better way. If you read one version of the Bible, the strength of that is you become more and more familiar with it. The weakness is you just begin to read over what you think you have already heard or read, and you kind of miss things sometimes. But I are always having to go and look up stuff and see if it's really in the King James Version of the Bible when we read these new versions. And, I, and uh, some this past week said, that's not in the Bible. And, uh, and we were reading the Lex, the, yeah, Lex some English Bible this year, I believe it is. And so we turned to the King James Version, and there it was. You just, that's why I would encourage you to read a different version. But read your Bible, whichever one you have. And, and also, we will be on, we're already on Facebook. And so, God bless you. Uh, those people who are joining us online, wherever you are, we are glad to have you with us. Can we let those people know that we appreciate them joining us? Thank you. Let's speak to your heart today. Amen. Church, if you can, let's stand for, for the reading, together for the reading of the Word. And I'm, I know sort of what time it is. Just might not get all this preaching. We'll do at least something. And this is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. The Passion Bible, which are very long verses, actually. And the Bible says there, the Apostle Paul, moved on by the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit writing through the Apostle Paul, we have this word. 
But you need to be aware that in the final days, in the last days, I think King James the culture of society will become extremely fierce and difficult for the people of God. This has happened throughout time. This was actually written, depending on who, which Bible authority uh, that you accept, uh, possibly uh, in AD 66. So this was about 35 years or 30 years or so after Christ had gone back to heaven. And, and this is what the Lord revealed to the Apostle Paul that in the final days, the last days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce and difficult for people of God. People will be self-centered, lovers of themselves, and obsessed with money. They will boast of great things as they as they strut around in their ignorant pride and mock all that is right. They will ignore their own families. They will be ungrateful and ungodly. Those two attitudes go together. If you're an ungrateful person, you put yourself in a bad uh, uh, place to be in. You really need to correct that. It's nothing good is going to come out of a lack of gratitude. Verse 3. They will become addicted to hateful and malicious slander. Slaves to their desires, they will be ferocious, belligerent haters of what is good and right. With brutal treachery, they will act without restraint, bigoted and wrapped in clouds of their conceit. They will find their delight in the pleasures of this world rather than the pleasures of the loving God. They will become addicted to hate them they will become addicted to hateful and malicious slander. Slaves to desires. They will become uh, ferocious. So we just have that verse there uh, twice. But we're going to look at in times like these. It could be any, any time. But particularly as we look at the times uh, in the history of the church, uh, you have these periods. And, and, and this is one, these, these right here are signs of the last days or the final days before Christ returns for the church. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your grace toward us. Thank you for all the amazing music and the, and the people all over the world that you lay your songs upon their heart. As uh, we find, I think it is in the book of Job, you give songs in the night even. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for the promises in those songs. And we receive them by faith as though they are our promises. And we thank you for the word of God. May it come alive in our hearts and lives. And may you be with us all as we go through the rest of the morning worship. And then as we go into our week ahead. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you for being here. You did good. Glad to have you with us. And you may be seated. Amen. Amen. The whole issue here is that in the last days, people just basically will love themselves more than they love God or love them Sales rather than love God. And this is not anything new. It began with Lucifer or Satan uh, in heaven when he rebelled against the Lord and it cost him and a third of the angels uh, their eternity in the presence of God. They will spend the eternity in hell. I don't understand it. And nobody's ever, I've read, never read where anybody did. Part of those uh, uh, angels that fell that we refer to possibly as demons now, they are loose. Others, the Bible says, are reserved in chains of darkness. That is a place, I believe, in the, the heart of the earth, basically, where they are kept. The Bible says, and they are kept there, waiting or reserved for judgment. And, and so, when you look at angels, the problem with angels is this. They don't have but one opportunity to live for the Lord. You and I, because of the grace of God, we have a wonderful opportunity to get to, to begin living for the Lord again, even if we fall from the grace of God. Uh, but the angels do not, and that's because Jesus did not die for their sins. They sinned one sin, that's it, and, uh, and they have no hope. We did have hope for Christ. Now, this, this rebellion against God, this, these characteristics of society, in the final or the last days and it did begin with Lucifer and then uh, through his deceitfulness then to, to Eve 
and then Adam, who willfully sinned in what he was doing, and chose Eve uh, and, and instead of living for the Lord. And, and not only that, it continues uh, in the lives of people who resist God's will for their lives, just as Lucifer and Adam and Eve and Cain did in the, in the book of Genesis. The result of that kind of life is always evil and destruction and endless losses and people allowing sin to dominate their lives. You shouldn't live. That's not a good way to live. That's not a good place to live. And it affects their thinking and the way they live out their lives. And we look at time as it progresses. Things always change. The weather has always changed. Uh, circumstances have always changed. All of us have had really good days and some really terribly difficult days. That's life. There's some good news about all this. And first of all, the good news is this. Our God is still the same. There's an advantage of putting your hope or trust in the Lord. Uh, many years ago, Ron Henson, uh, Henson uh, wrote a song called The Lighthouse. And in that lighthouse, he portrays Jesus as a lighthouse uh, that on a hill that is unmovable. So if you're out in the ocean, you will drift and bounce up and down with the waves and all kinds of things like that. Uh, but if there's a light from a lighthouse, as it used to be, now they use GPS and other stuff. Uh, but if there's a light, like as there was many years ago, uh, all these people had to do was to be able to see that light and they knew where the shoreline was, sometimes knew where the harbor was, sometimes knew where the rocks were not to go. But that's the advantage of it. It gives you a, a clear sense of direction. Well, that's what the Lord does. When you focus on the Lord and you live for the Lord, things around you will be uh, transitional. They're changing. But when you put your trust and faith in God, He's going to be the same tomorrow as He was yesterday, and His promises will be just as powerful next year as they were last year. Just because I haven't received all the promises that I have claimed, the Bible says all the promises of God are both yes and, and amen and in Christ Jesus. And that means every promise in the Bible, I believe, that, that we could look at it and claim it for our own, basically, by faith. Now, in Malachi 3, 6, 3, chapter, chapter 3, verse 6, this is the last part. This is the King James Version. For here God is speaking to his people. For I am the Lord, he says. I'm guessing L-O-R-D is Yahweh. Uh, and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Therefore, Israel... It's because I don't change and I made some promises to Abraham and some other people. That's the only reason you're still on the earth. And I would say it's just because of the mercy of God that you're able to stand. But if the mercy of God is real, and it is, and if the grace of God is real, by the grace of God through faith, you and I will be in heaven one day with the Lord. Gods of this world, don't they change? been in transition. But our God remains forever unchanged as the Bible says in one place in Hebrews, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you have ever known the Lord, if you've ever let God work in your life and the Lord has ever changed your life and you thought this was wonderful as it, I, that's the way I felt when I got saved. Amazing uh, how amazing this was. And yet I've had some tough times. We've all had those times. But God is just the same God in the really bad times just as He was back when I was on the mountaintop after I got saved. I change sometimes. My emotions may change. But God is consistent forever. Put your hope in the Lord. You will live a far more consistent life and you're going to bring blessing after blessing upon you Christ is still Lord of all. And all who come to Him 
by or through faith are saved. Praise God. And the Holy Spirit is still at work. The Holy Spirit who moved upon the water in the book of Genesis when the earth was without form and void in the King James Version. The Spirit moved or hovered over or brooded over the waters. And the Holy Spirit is still the same Holy Spirit today that He is when you and I got saved. It was a work of the presence of God, the Holy Ghost, at work in our lives. The Holy Spirit, Ghost and Spirit, in the Greek Numa, PNME, PNEUMA, same word, air, breath, all of those things. But in that instance, it refers to the Spirit of God. Now, that same Spirit has not changed all over the world. God is doing a mighty work in the hearts and lives of people. Amen. And he is a friend who will stick closer than a brother. And the Lord can be with you in the midnight hour when there's nobody there and nobody sees your tears and nobody hears your heartbreak. The Lord can be with you when you're on the mountaintop and the sun is shining bright and everything's going your way. But the same Holy Spirit, the Lord can be with you when nobody stands with you. Can you give the Lord a friend? <coughs> in times like these, we need the Lord to be an anchor. We've all, that's not just because of today or yesterday. That's nothing new. People have been preaching these kind of sermons, I suppose, since that's been written. Amen. And the Bible, secondly, and I've got a bunch of these, I'll probably just try to do this one and stop. But the Bible and God's promises, they do two things. They still conquer people, and they are still unchanging. When we look at the promise of God, one of the promises that God made is both in the Old Testament and New Testament. There are some promises, a number of them that are in both the Old Testament and New Testament. And the promise that God gave was I'm, that, that it, it, I'm an unchanging. In the Old Testament, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm the Lord God. I changed not in, in the New Testament. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, forever. There's a story of Jacob in the Old Testament. And he's on his way back, I believe it is, to try to reconcile with his brother whom he had wronged. And in Genesis 28, this is going to be the New Living Translation. This is where he has that dream about the angels of God up and down this ladder that he sees. In the New Living Translation, it's a stairway. So this is how it's worded in that version. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord. This is a dream or a vision that Jacob is having. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham, and the God of your father Isaac. The ground you are lying on belongs to you. I had no idea. I am giving it to you and your descendants. And then God makes this promise to him, and it's really the promise that God made to Abraham first. When he told Abraham when he was Abram, come outside. He said, now, come outside and look at the stars and see if you can count them. Of course you can't count them. The better microscope you have, electron huge, electron microscopes, and everything scientists use now, space ships, the more they see, the more there is to see. It's unending. And so God speaks to Abram, says, Count the stars if you can. Abram did not even have a child. Not one. Count the stars if you can. And if you can count them, that's basically how many descendants you'll have. Then look at the seashore where the sea is and count every grain of sand. That's how many descendants you're going to have. Well, that sounds great, but Abram doesn't even have one descendant. He and Hagar gave it a try in a different way and it was nothing but problems. But God hadn't forgot his promise. It had been 
three generations now, and, and here is this generation. God speaks, and He says, your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions, even to Cairo, Georgia, or wherever you're watching from. To the west and the east, to the north and the south, and all the families of the earth will be blessed by you and your descendants. Eventually, do you know who one of the descendants of Jacob was? It was Jesus Christ. Jesus said, those who do the works of Abraham, that is, you live by faith, you walk with the Lord, even if it's imperfectly, and you continue to believe God no matter what. Those who do that, he said, they're the descendants or the children of Abraham. We're in that number if you're saved. Amen. In this particular passage of Scripture, there are seven promises of God. I'll go over these and then I'll try to quit. The first promise was this. I will be with you. That's the promise God made. And I'll tell you, if you will live for the Lord, God makes that same promise to you. That was the promise He made for me when I did not want to preach. I was glad to sing and glad to play, glad to teach, loved doing youth work, did not want to preach. But the Lord made me a promise. And I will say this, He has kept His promise to me. It had not been easy sometimes. It's been tough sometimes. Sometimes things went every way but right. And sometimes I've been blamed for stuff for which I had absolutely nothing to do with. But I will tell you, and that may happen to you. That's nothing. That's ministry. It's not a hassle. You can get better or get better. I'm going to get better. Praise God. Let the Lord arise and let His enemies be scattered. And let's look to God. And God can help us in our circumstances. But He said, I'll be with you. And everyone who has ever walked with the Lord, I can tell you there's broken hearts along the way. I can tell you there will be losses along the way unless you're in a better position than I have been. But I can tell you in all of those that God will be with you. And the Lord restore you the joy of the Lord when you think it's run out and it's never coming back with God nothing shall be impossible that the Lord can do in your life that you can never do for yourself can you give him praise yeah. second promise I'll protect you in one message I found somebody who said you are invincible you're immortal until God is through with you. There were people who wanted to kill Jesus a lot of times. Once he walked back through the crowd and they didn't recognize him. Just didn't see him. Though he was right there in the middle of them. That's sort of how we might be sometimes. God protected Jesus. Didn't matter what happened to him. But he was immortal. He wasn't going to die until it was the time for Jesus to die. The Bible says about his birth at just the right time. It doesn't sound like that in the King James Bit Version, but that's what it means. At just the right time, God sent his son, born uh, under the under born of a woman under the old the Mosaic law, basically, the Old Testament law. But God protected him. The Lord will protect us all. Sometimes He protects us physically, and other times He protects us spiritually. If you have a choice, choose spiritually. That's the one that's eternal. Physically is just for this life. The third thing God promises, I will be your strength. When it comes to strength, my favorite verse is Isaiah 41, verse 10. And if you're struggling, life's tough. Things are not going your way, and you're having a tough time in life. Here's your verse. And it is Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness, or my victorious or strong right hand. The symbol 
the strength in the Old Testament. Yes. The Lord is able to do that. And when you are dismayed because of circumstances or other things, don't be dismayed. Hear the Word of God. Take Isaiah 41 verse 10. Write it down where you see it the first time in the morning when you first get up, when you last lay, when the family you lay down. Put it on a mirror somewhere. Put it on a refrigerator somewhere. If you can put it somewhere. So you will see it and let God speak to you every time you see that. Fear thou not, for I will thee be not dismayed, for I am thy God, I will strengthen thee. Yet I will help thee, and I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Like Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord. Can you wait upon the Lord in faith? Waiting upon the Lord doesn't mean doing, any, doing nothing. It means being involved in the work of God. I pay the tithes anyway. I give offerings anyway. I do the work of God anyway. Regardless of those things. Thank God for all of you. Do you know how to do that? That's maturing in the Lord. That's what waiting in the Lord means. Praise God. Those who wait upon the Lord shall. Somebody say shall. The Lord will be your strength. The Lord's strength is a lot better than your strength. Praise the Lord. The next promise was, I will answer you. I will answer you. I think it was Jeremiah 33, 3, where the Lord spoke to Jeremiah and said, Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know that you know not, that you don't even know yet. The Lord is able to do that. I'll answer you. Don't you hate it when you really need to call somebody like your daughter, for instance, just a, a loose example here, and you're trying to get hold of her, and, and for some reason her phone is like ignoring you. you ever, has that ever been aggravating? Don't you like it a lot better when they pick it up? Hey, Dad, even though stressed out sometimes, like the day that she gave out of gas, she called him out of gas. I said, well, get you some gas. No, I like it. I finally have a quiet place. I love it. And you might be too busy if you have those kind of days. Amen. But when, when somebody answers, that's a lot better. Sometimes that's all of us that can't answer the phone or, or have our volume turned off till Monday afternoon and I figured out I didn't turn it back on after church on my phone. But the Lord is the God who answers us. Not always the way we want it to be answered. Sometimes it might be a no. And it is sometimes. It might be for our own good, even if we don't think it is. And the Lord said, I'll provide for you. The word provider is, I mean, like in the compound names of God, it's Jehovah Jireh. I believe that's the Lord God who provides. And that, that's what, what, uh, Abraham, I believe it was, said when God said to offer up Isaac as a, as a sacrifice on that mountain. And there was a ram. And, and God provided a sacrifice. And the Lord's promise was to Jacob and to us, I'll give you peace. God is, has a peace that transcends our ability to understand things it passes human understanding it's a better peace than that not dependent upon this world or just because things go well I like for things to go well personally I just I, I comforts me but I'm not always comforted and we actually were not put here just to be comfortable we were put here to, to grow in grace and do the work of God and finally the promise was, I'll always love you. Keep my promises too. You know, God, as our musicians come, the Lord cares for you. He's concerned about you. If I had time, I would preach on we're not alone in the battle. Like the song, I think, to one I just sang, a good song. Then I would preach about the salvation of the Lord is powerful and life changing. So we all know those things. But God is great. 
And God bless you for being here. God bless you for watching. Tune in at 6 o'clock uh, Sunday night and uh, be a devotion. Not be by Leslie Cox. Could be Crystal Ford. Could be Jamie Bowler. We'll find out. Amen. Let's stand together, if you will. Let's pray. We'll pray where we are. But if you need prayer, you want to pray at the altar. It is open. God cares for you. It's been a great day to be in the Lord's house. I was glad when they sent over me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Already excited about Aaron Fuller, Evangelist Aaron Fuller, being with us next Sunday morning. Father God, thank you for the privilege we have to be in a place where your presence is. A lot of life in church today. We thank you for it. It's the life of Christ. We thank you, God, for your blessings, every blessing. Help us to appreciate our blessings. Those we're aware of, those we might not be aware of. Because we look to you. You're our source. In the book of Psalms, we are your people and the sheep of your pasture. It is you who have made us and not we ourselves. So we look to you. And we thank you that we can say what like the psalmist said in Psalm 23 about your children. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not mourn. That is, I shall not lie. Do we thank you for your promises? Lord, we do pray for those. Bless me, God, that you would make your way. There's some people who need a way made for them in their circumstances. And their circumstances are indeed, indeed, Sometimes seems to be underneath struggling, maybe healing for their body. 